You know, anytime I talk about this man, I get so much hate. It astounds me, some of the comments I get on my videos when I talk about this guy. First guy to perform a perfect game in Pac-Man. Where would Donkey Kong be today if it wasn't for this man? He's an arcade legend, and the fact that people are trying to drag his name through the mud makes me absolutely sick. You know, I spoke to this guy on the phone a couple times. Never got to meet him yet. Today, that's all gonna change. Today, I got some questions I wanna ask him. And today, I'm very excited to meet one of the biggest arcade legends of all time. Rise and shine. Josh, Dude. I'm gonna have to ask you to get up, sir. You're blind me. Yeah, you're gonna have to get up, and we have to drive for about almost six hours because. Can you say King of Kong? Okay, guys, we actually just got here. We're in Indiana. We've been driving for, I wanna say, close to six hours. We're actually right on location right now. We're early. We actually beat Neil. We beat Bill, we beat Casey, we beat everybody here today. I think we're, they're gonna be getting lunch soon. I don't know if we're gonna join them or not, but uh, I'm pretty excited, guys. Never been to Indiana before, so uh, it's my first time here. So uh, the next shot that you see may be, uh, you know, Billy Mitchell himself. I honestly have no idea. I've been... realized that I get a real kick out of being and playing me on the camera, competitively and fun. And then when I go to a convention, and one-on-one, -on -one, I meet people, there's an autograph, a selfie, a question, a, an introduction or something, and they meet me. The sharp contrast, the sharp difference, I just really get a kick out of throwing people for a loop. I mean, I do, I'd, I'd lie to you if I didn't. You know, when someone walks up and goes, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't wanna bother you. I say, I mean, that's why I'm here, is because they want people like you to interact. You know how to control that thing, sir? I do. So what he's trying to do is actually get an aerial shot of the Irvington Lodge where the play is being performed today. Hey guys, I'm here with the one and only Billy Mitchell. You are? <laughs> Sorry, but we're having some technical difficulties. Oh, there they are, right there. Technical difficulties. Wait, you can't turn the lights on or what? There they go, there they go. Yeah, see, he went through all that. Mr. Topher went over and hits the switch and the light goes on. Neil's like the doomsday guy. You gotta be careful of that. <laughs> I said, he's drilling me on this. Hey Neil, what's going on? Well, I actually played and got really, really, really good at Donkey Kong first. And I'm searching, wanting to know where they have Donkey Kong contests. And the guy says to me, well, they don't have contests on that. I go, why not? I go, you had a contest on Tron. He goes, yeah, but that was just for the movie. And I go, is that Aladdin's castle? I go, so where do you have contests on Donkey Kong? He goes, you don't have the contests on Donkey Kong. He said, it's popular. He said, but it's not like Pac-Man. And I go, what do you mean it's not like Pac-Man? It's Donkey Kong. And he goes, yeah, it's popular, but it's not Pac-Man. So I thought, all right, forget him, man. I'll just get the world record on Pac-Man too. So what is the message that you're trying to convey uh, through this, uh, the play here? Um, I actually don't think that comedy or entertainment or anything that's like silly has to be cruel. And um, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff about Billy in a lot of uh, videos and it, it was getting pretty nasty during the controversy this year. He's been the villain for a while, you know, since 2007. I wanted to do something different and actually do a research thing. So it's more kind of the untold end of the story and maybe the flip side of the controversy. I think we really focused in the main controversy as he was he was guilty until he could prove himself innocent, but he didn't have any help to prove himself in, innocent at all, you know? Yeah, it seemed like just everyone was out to, to get him at that point. Billy and I mean, like, this is a guy that he wasn't on social media. He wasn't on Facebook. He wasn't on Instagram. So, like, as this is brewing in the forums, he's not seeing it. And it was just a really interesting thing. So it's... um. In a way, it's kind of an anti-bullying piece. It's, I it's, I don't it, like internet culture. I really don't. And uh, I'm kind of picking on the trolls in this. It's a it's an anti-troll piece. No clue who's on the phone with him right now, but Sean is acting as Billy Mitchell's press guy right now. You take it 
take it easy, man. Okay. What? Let me see. Well, one, I'm, I'm using Billy's phone. Right. And uh, Billy just handed me the phone, and he said, I'm the press. So you take care of this call. And this random person, I don't know how he got Billy's number. And it's really weird. I think that's why Billy gave me the phone. He was like, hey, take care of this. Right, right, right. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I was like, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the press guy here, you know. Uh, I take care of all of his, uh, his affairs. <laughs> so he just kept going on and on and on how he's a big Billy fan, and he said never surrender. And I just wanted to call and say the same thing, and uh, it was weird. I'm not gonna lie, it was weird, but uh, I took care of him. So. <laughs> No, I. No, no, I get those sometimes. And I asked him how to get the number because it sounded like you never really know who he was, right? Right. And I said, I said, he's like, who's this? I said, I'm Billy's press guy. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say this. Right. So I'm sitting at my desk and. I, I, I was in a bad mood. And the phone rang. And I pick it up. Oh, is Billy there? And I go, Yeah, this is Billy. Click. The guy hangs up. You hang up. About a minute later, less than a minute, the phone rings again. I can see. Hello, can I help you? I didn't say more. Hello, can I help you? Billy? Yes. I just want you to know that. I, 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 I think what you did was horrible. You do, huh? All right, which thing? Oh, that guy came all the way to your restaurant, and you didn't even have the decency to go out and say hi to him. And I go, is that what you think? I, I know that's what happened. I saw the movie. And I go, oh, oh you're saying that's not what happened? I go, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that's not what happened. I'm just saying they didn't tell you the whole story. What's the whole story? Well, after after it was done, after they were done filming, they put their cameras away. Yeah, I went inside, I grabbed them, I beat the living out of it, and I threw them in a dumpster. It's like the guy hangs up the phone, and I go, "Oh, come on, I'm only kidding, man." I pick up, you know, I dial the number back. Hey, listen, this is Billy. I was just click. The guy hangs up. Come on. Hey, wait, it's Billy. Click. He just keeps hanging up on me, like for whatever reason. <laughs> then I got busy and I lost track of it. Somewhere out there, there's a guy thinking I beat Steve in the dumpster. So, what the hell? Do you think they're actually portraying you correctly in this play that we're about to watch tonight? Because you've, you've seen it one time so far. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I really like the portrayal of myself in this, and it, uh, it, shows me, it, it, it shows me very much of, you know, how I am. I think as the play evolves, as time passes, um, I, the, the actor will play, uh, play me more like myself. But the way it looks now, this is a, a much more accurate portrayal of me than, um, than uh, the documentary was. Why the heck does everyone blame Neil for everything? Well, Somebody called me. We're doing an interview, and the interview's going great, and this guy screws it up. Get out of here, Neil. <laughs> Blame Neil. <laughs> it's just, every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. Every time. The truth of the matter is to expand on the Neil question is he does do everything. He puts stuff together. It's what he does for a living. He does it for me. We have fun on stream. And if he's in charge of the controls and there's a jump, and you can hear the button hit and not a jump. It's a failed jump. Well, who are you going to blame? You're not going to blame me. You blame Neil. So it just sort of caught on. He has his Eat, Sleep, Donkey Kong shirts. Where <laughs> People want to get Eat, Sleep, Donkey Kong, Blame Neil <laughs> shirts. So maybe we will. Now, this is the, the, probably the biggest question of them all, at least for me. Um, is there a, a, a potential Donkey Kong kill screen coming up? Yeah, well, as you can see, Billy's playing right now. So there's a kill screen coming up if anyone's interested. <laughs> as long as, yeah, as, long as Neil stays away. Sometimes when you meet someone in person, you have a different view of them. And after meeting Billy Mitchell, my view has changed. Not only did I witness his unbelievable skills firsthand, I saw the man behind the tie. The man I sat and ate breakfast with. The man who told me if I ever need anything just to let him know. Don't let the movies fool you. Billy Mitchell really isn't the villain he's painted out to be. I didn't just meet Billy Mitchell that day. I made a friend along the way.
Thanks for watching the video, guys. I definitely do appreciate it. And I will be uploading the full Billy Mitchell and Brian Koo interview in the near future. And when I do, you can find the link to those videos in the description below. And that's pretty much all for right now. And as always, guys, there'll be more to come shortly. Thanks again.